In this video, we're going to look at the various reports available in your Easy Time Clock account located in the Reports menu. We'll start out by taking a deeper look into the workings of the most commonly used report, then we'll visit each of the other reports. The detailed report is the most popular, as it is a great tool for viewing everyone's punches and totals at a glance. Reports will all have filters at the top for you to determine what pay period or date range, who and what kind of hours you want to display. The report is ordered alphabetically by username. The exception to this would be activating the department column, which would sort alphabetically by department. Like department, some columns won't be on the report by default. Almost all of the columns can be shown or hidden depending on how you want your report to be structured. Column customization can be done in the General Setup Options page under Setup. Next, you see the date, clock ins and outs, totals for each line, and type to indicate a project, PTO, or just work. If employees are granted access to attached notes to their punches, you will also see an entry note column along with the notes they've added. In the in, out, or hours columns, you may occasionally see an asterisk. This would indicate there has been an edit to that entry. The day column shows the daily total and the week column shows the weekly total. If you have pay periods that span longer than seven days, you might notice part of the week column is a different color. This indicates a new week and therefore a new period for overtime calculations. The pay period and payroll columns are similar to each other and don't usually need to both be present. When using projects, the pay period column designates what project accrued overtime, whereas payroll just totals all of the regular rate hours and overtime hours. If you aren't using projects, you almost certainly don't need both the pay period and payroll columns. You can choose which you prefer and deactivate the other in the General Setup Options page to slim down your report. If you're tracking other compensations, like mileage or reimbursement, you will see one or more columns that will total that data. And finally, Edit will take you to the Edit page. The next report we'll look at is the Summary Report, which is the report you would use to export to your payroll company. Even if not exporting, this report is especially good for running payroll as it just shows the totals for the pay period. The individual and authorization report are great for printing when you want each employee on their own sheet. There is also approval information on the individual report and customizable signature lines on both. The workweek report will total individual weeks and put your report in more of a calendar view. The next three reports are a little different. The Time Punch Conflict Report shows you missed punches and punches that are flagged as early or tardy based on shifts if using that feature. It does not show missed clock ins because our system doesn't have scheduling functionality, but it will show missed clock outs. So if an employee is currently clocked in, they'll show up on the report. Shift Comparison will tally the shift discrepancies if you're using the shifts feature. The who's in report will show you who is currently clocked in or out. Pretty straightforward. The PTO usage report is a great way to see each employee's usage and balance for each PTO category. This report won't let you see all employees at once, so if you need to see everyone's current balances, check out the PTO balances page under features. The full-time report averages employee hours by month, which can help determine how many full-time employees you have based on however you define full-time. The Employee Summary Report takes its information from the Employee HR Setup page under Setup, but it has a unique feature. It calculates how many months employees have been with the company. This can be helpful at times, like when determining PTO eligibility. The minute to decimal comparison chart is just a standardized report to show how a minute value set in base 60 compares to a decimal value in base 10. For example, 
30 minutes is half of an hour. So that means it's 50% of an hour, which in decimal is 0.5 hours. Archive data will show reports that have crossed over into archive. This means all time card data from over 18 months ago and access report data from over one month ago. Which brings us to the access report, which is our favorite report. This shows you every action taken in the account by every username, including the admin. So if you need to know if a supervisor edited their own time card, or what day you made a change to settings, or the original time an employee clocked in after the time card was edited, come here. There's a date and timestamp, the page and action, and the user who did it. It even offers an IP address. IP addresses don't usually tell you the location of the internet access, but it can give you an idea of how and maybe where the user was based on their ISP. When employees clock in or out on the mobile app, you will see GPS coordinates in place of the IP address. Now this shows you a location. At the top, you will see filters you can use to narrow the scope of activity. You can look as far back as about a month. Otherwise, you can access the archive data to view activity in the past. You can also filter down to a single user or even filter what you see based on specific page or action. Another helpful hint for finding data in this report is using Control F or Command F to find specific words or names. If ever in doubt about who, what, or where, come to the access report.